Greetings, everyone. I'm at my prophecy and ministry desk in the international studios of Voice of Evangelism, the global center for world evangelism and reaching the world with the messages of Scripture. With me today is a very special friend that I have known for a long time. And Robert, I have to say this about you, and I'm serious. I've known you since 1988, and you have not changed. <laughs> and I won't tell people I, how old you are. You're, I not, will. you're not real old. How old are you? 70. You'd never know it. I looked 70 know. 40 years ago. He looked, That's what he said. <laughs> Let's see him. We wanted to do a little Inside Israel update, okay? Robert, you own a travel agency. Well, you work at a travel I, agency. I, I say at, own, yeah. you work there. Knows where they travel. And we've been going with you to Israel since 1988. Tell the people so they'll know you know what you're talking about. How many times have you been to Israel? Uh, I think 163, 163 somewhere in there. 163 times. Yeah. I have been at least 40 times. Yeah. And we travel from at the expression from Dan to Beersheba. We yeah. have literally we have been, been across the country. Now, most of you know that on October the 7th, there was a terrible tragedy of a terrorist attack, a very well-organized, horrible terrorist attack that happened in Israel at 22 kibbutzes in the southern part of Israel. Now. Uh, it just so happens that when we go on our whole land trip, we stick with an itinerary that is basically a noted tourist itinerary, such as most groups do. Therefore, n almost no one goes into the Gaza Strip at all. You don't, you know, there's no reason to. Correct. Uh, it's a, a big fence up. It's a security area. It's a military area, as most of you may know. Uh, we have been to Ashkelon, by the way, which has one of the finest restaurants in Israel. I have to say that. I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. I have to say that. <laughs> and it's, it's in the area, but Ashkelon is a fabulous coastal city. Yeah. But outside of that, when you go to Israel, it is very safe. Now, I'm going to ask Robert a question because a lot of you only know the land of Israel from news. And when you watch the news in the United States, you'll see where there's been an attack. There's been someone maybe has uh, taken a knife and stabbed somebody in a city. And you see, you hear about what's called the Palestinian Jewish or the Palestinian Israeli conflict. But they don't tell you how well people get along there. Yeah. They don't tell you how the Jewish businessmen and the Arab businessmen are friends. They don't tell you, for example, in Jerusalem, that my Muslim friends attend the wedding of the Jewish people. Right. They are friends. Yeah. Their families have known each other for generations. What you see is a very small radical element rising up and you see protest, but you don't see what we call just the common people who work at the hotels, who work in the restaurants, who work in the stores and who work in the shops, whose livelihood depends upon tourism. There, was, there has been in the past up to 4 million or more tourists that go to Israel each and every year. Now, Robert, in your time of going, have you ever seen out of 160 trips anything that made you want to get in the plane and go back home no. because you were afraid? No. Never. never. No. Can I honestly can tell you I have not either. Yeah. And once again, because most of your tours stay in tourist areas that are well protected, well preserved, uh, not that not that controversial, etc. Yeah. And so I want to say to you that when we talk about the Israel update, you have to understand some things about Israel. Number one, the Bible tells us that the key to Bible prophecy, you cannot read the Old or New Testament till you understand the key to Bible prophecy is Israel, Jerusalem, and the Jewish people. When you look at the book of Daniel and the prophecies of Daniel concerning Daniel's 70 weeks, which is that famous seven-year tribulation prophecy in Daniel 9:27, mm. God tells him through the angel, this is about your people and the holy city mm -hmm. and the land, the glorious land, God calls it. Mm -hmm. It's the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. So the end time prophecies, would you agree with me, Robert, will center on <coughs> Israel, the Jewish people, and the city of Jerusalem. 100%. Now, having said that, we know, if we again look at prophecy, that in the book of Zechariah, Jerusalem becomes a cup of trembling yeah. and nations rise up against the city of Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, we have behind us this panoramic, panoramic view. It's fantastic. On, isn't it? Does it almost feel like you're there? If we had a little bit of heat, the sunshine it's and some fantastic. wind blowing and some, and some dogs barking my, and some <laughs> buses going by. My compliments to you <laughs> and to your partners for putting this, for allowing you to do oh, something Oh, isn't it like, fabulous? It's just beautiful. Isn't it fabulous? It's just beautiful. And, and if I can stand up, and I know the camera guys are not ready for this, <laughs> 
But I'm going to stand up and take my microphone because I'm going to show you I'm going to show you something here that is important with this little prophetic update. All right. And what I'm going to do, and I may be out of the light range if I do this, but it's I'm okay. chuckling is, because before we got on, I talked to, to Charlie and I said, Charlie, can we walk around? And, no, no, the lights are bad. But the, yeah, so here this we go. is a this is a YouTube video, so we get by <laughs> with it. Over here in this direction is what's called the Dome of the Rock. Now, the Dome of the Rock is a mosque that has been situated on the Temple Mount, and there's also another part of this, which is this building here. This building here that does not have the gold on top of it is also an Islamic mosque. It's the Alaska Mosque. Right. Now these go back to like the seventh century. Am I right on yeah, both of those? I believe. I believe. So. I think you're right. uh, and and so this is an area that the Muslims uh, have uh, uh, authority and control over, and have had it uh, really from for, for literally a long, long, long time. And I'm going to step back here a little bit where we can get back in the picture. Now, the eastern gate, you can't see it on the picture, is over here to the right, which is off from the picture. The western wall is behind this. It's right. in a valley. It's in the valley of the cheesemakers, but it's down here in this area. So if you ever see the western wall in line with where the Temple Mount or the Dome of the Rock is, yeah. you can see it. Now, this whole area where the dome is, all the area surrounding it is called called the Temple Mount, but it's also called in the Bible, Mount Moriah. Right. And you will read where Solomon built the temple <clears throat> on Mount Moriah. So we know the temple of Solomon and also the temple of Herod in Jesus' day was built somewhere in this direction here. Right, right back in, in this direction. We're in the Kidron is, Valley. Yeah, here. right now, if we were in Israel, we would be standing in what's called the Kidron Valley. And you can read about that in scripture. But there's a set of steps right down here that were excavated. And Robert's pointing to those right here, and that's called the Hulda Steps, mm -hmm. named after the prophetess Hulda in the Bible. Now, these are, these are authentic original steps that Jesus and his disciples walked into in that day that the New Testament talks about where Jesus came into the temple. And so this was the steps. There's also what's called a mikvah here, which is a, we would call it a baptismal pool. It's where they oh, dipped and submerged area. themselves before they would go into the temple area uh, to it's make sure that they were here. cleansed and sanctified. And that's in this area here. And now we come into this area, and this is another very important area. This is the city of David. All of this up here in the top area, and this is a church, you can see the church here, but there, there is an area up here called Caiaphas's house. Now Caiaphas's house is right there. Yeah. Robert's gonna point on the screen. And again, bear with us because this was not planned. You see where Robert's pointing? That's the dungeon where Jesus spent the night and this comes down into the Kidron Valley, which is right over here in this area. This and the Kidron Valley, right through here that comes all Kidron. the way in front of the Eastern Gate and around, is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And it's where the Bible talks about the nations would one day be judged. This is what we call the east side of Jerusalem. Now, if I'm in Jerusalem, where my desk is right now would be the Mount of Olives. And I would be on the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended and I would look back mm -hmm. and I would see this is the view, literally, if I were there today in the Garden of Gethsemane is at the base of the Dome of the Rock in the, on this side right here, uh, which is the base of the Mount of Olives. Now this area is the city of Jerusalem and it's the area, ladies and gentlemen, where the Bible teaches us that in the last days, it's gonna be a controversy. And that controversy, and I hope that a lot of you, oh my goodness, I hope a lot of you got to see Bill Cloud and I do our prophetic webinar, which was incredible. And one of the teachings I did was the fact that the Palestinian state, which is what the whole argument about this land is about, the Palestinian state and the formation of a Palestinian state, which the present president is now talking about, he's definitely wanting to do, that will be the controversy that the prophet Zechariah talked about that will happen in the last days at the time of the end. And it tells you in Zechariah's prophecy, as I pointed out in the webinar a few weeks ago, that the city will be divided in half again. Now, how is it gonna be divided? And I'm gonna go back to this map and show you this. This area from right here where you see the two domes, this area here and where the Western Wall was, all of this was called Arab East Jerusalem coming this way. I have my back towards you, but coming this way toward the Mount of Olives, Mount of Olives, then Bethany, then way in the valley is Jericho. All of that is today called the West Bank, but that is called East Jerusalem. Now in 1967, uh, before the Six Day War, this was divided and this was Jordan and everything on this side over here that you see, those tall buildings, that was 
West Jerusalem, which was Jewish area. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole Christian area that's right in the middle. So you had Arab, Muslim area, Christian area, and Jewish area. So in the 1967 war, what happened is that the uh, Jordan lost this territory, mm -hmm. Israel annexed this mm -hmm. territory, and united East and West to become the capital of Israel. Today, all of this territory is predominantly area, uh, Arab, but that territory over there is a mix. It's Christians, Arabs, and a mm -hmm. lot of Jewish people, but it mm -hmm. would be in that far direction, what really off this picture that you're looking at here. Mm -hmm. So what will happen in the time of the end is when this state is formed, it's going to split the city again, but it says half the city goes into captivity. And the half that goes into captivity is not the Arab section, it's this section over here. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you something that Jerusalem is going to be what the Bible said, a cup of trembling in the last days as nations battle over the city. Now, it makes no sense as to why this property here, why do you fight over it? Because it's a religious conflict. Yes. It is the center of the Christian. It, it is the really Christianity claims Jerusalem, Islam claims Jerusalem, yeah. and the Jews can't ch claim Jerusalem. All three claim the same piece of property, all right? And all three live there presently. But this is going to be a cup of trembling. And we're going to call this a, the prophecy update. The cup of trembling has begun. Mm. And what we saw take place is the beginning. But that doesn't mean, and Robert knows this and I do too, that you can't visit this land because you'd be shocked. Yerushalayim is supposed to mean city of peace. Yeah. When you go there, there can be any conflict happening in any part of the land and you feel the peace of God. Am I telling the truth, Robert? Yes. It's, the, it's supernatural. It's, it, it doesn't make sense, really. No, and the, uh, the beauty of while I'm standing here and I'm listening to you talk, you know, I've been there many times, I can visualize. Now, this, this helps so much, but it's still not the same as standing there. No, it's not. And being able to view what it would be like behind me, what it is in front of me, the Kidron Valley here. Yeah. You've got all the Jewish graves in front of me here on the Kidron Valley. And the Valley. Muslim graves in and front the of the Muslim Eastern graves Grave. over yeah. there. To, yeah, I mean, it's just no. it's. And I see, I see the archaeological park, which is here, which I love. I love that. I, I tape down there. Uh, and the beauty and, of it and now, And the destruction Perry, of the temple, the evidence of the destruction of the temple is all around the archaeological park. This is God's city. This is, is the land of God. This is the land of God's people. And we can go and visit it. Yeah. You know, for, for years it wasn't like that, especially prior to the 67. I mean, it was, it, you could go, but you couldn't get on this side. Yeah, that's right. And so now we can. Yeah. And, and so I would encourage people to go while you can. And actually, Robert and I were doing, I do, I'm doing a VIP tour to Israel in November yeah. and a regular tour. We were doing a, yeah. by the way, go to paristone.org if you want information on that. I'm not going to do an advertisement no. on this YouTube video. But I want to say to you that um, one of the things I did, I came into the studio, it wasn't set up like this, but I came to the studio and I taped a series on 30 prophecies being fulfilled in the Holy Land. Wow. 30. Wow. And it's a three hour teaching. Wow. And we're, we're about to release that. Not, it's not going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be on Manifest because there's things that we teach that doesn't need to be on social media. Now, people oh. don't understand that. I hear people, you need to be bold and you need to put, <laughs> you're not the person that gets you need the to be flag. wise too. Yeah, no, we need to be wise. Exactly. There are things you don't go on a global network and share that are yeah. only for the people of God to hear. Why did Jesus call certain disciples aside? And he taught them things he didn't Listen, teach the crowd. Go, really. to the, go to the second chapter of the book of John, the, the, the end of the chapter. And it says, and he was not entrusting them to, because he knew it was in the hearts of men. Yeah. And so Even you, the Lord you have to have wisdom when you share certain things. But my point is that that's going to be made available. You're going to be seeing that uh, in the near future. Uh, but as you know, uh, one of my, one of, and I'm going to close on this, one of the parts of my, our ministry is prophetic. One of the things we've done for 40, 40 trips is go to Israel, and I learn a lot, and I can come back and teach the people those things. And so, uh, as you know, we don't just teach prophecy. When you watch a YouTube video, you need to watch the practical stuff that we're giving to you, the warfare, the faith, all the other things that the Holy Spirit's given us. You need to watch those because you've got to get your spirit built up in the mm. time of the end. So, mm. Robert, thank you for just, oh you goodness. passed by. We actually were, were taping a little advertisement on my Perry Stone uh, it's an honor for uh, me dot, to be here. Org. It's a blessing. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And thank you for sharing with us uh, uh, today. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you soon again in the land of God. Amen. God bless everybody. Keep watching. We always have something special at the end. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the teaching. 
Humanity's final battle is being set in array, merging men with super advanced technology. Commonly known as artificial intelligence or AI, this new and at times frightening technology is said to be the greatest advancement of man's imagination since the beginning of humanity. But it comes with warnings from experts and developers. While AI can be used to deter crime, track criminals, and search for information at breathtaking speed, AI could eventually take over 80% of human jobs, replacing them with computers and robots. With AI, nothing about your private life, your finances, job, or family will be hidden. In the future, a male or female humanoid robot can become a walking, talking, living companion. Wealthy men are hoping AI will create the possibility of eternal life. According to experts, there are great dangers ahead. Uncontrolled AI systems could eventually destroy humanity. AI could also become a scammer's dream, using fake pictures, videos, voices, and accounts to blackmail innocent victims or transfer funds. In Perry Stone's explosive new prophecy book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, he reveals what others who have written about AI have missed including five ways in which AI will be brought to utter uselessness in the future as God, the creator of mankind, will have the final say as to when nature itself will release unrestrained destruction that will silence both man's modern technology and the electronic systems required for AI to function. Perry's new book presents stunning quotes, biblical word studies, and ancient history to document all the book's eye-opening information. He explains how an ancient clash in Eden and a massive tower in the plains of Shinar conceal huge historical parallels, repeating themselves during AI development. Perry explores whether the economic mystery Babylon mentioned in Revelation 18 could be the new AI city being planned in Arabia. Is China cryptically alluded to in Revelation 12 by the symbol of the great red dragon? Will men and women marry companion robots in the future? Could the image of the beast in Revelation 13 be an advanced AI creation built to introduce a new religion and to be worshipped as a god? Perry exposes the goal of transhumanism and will shock readers by revealing positive proof of five ways God will allow mankind's most advanced technologies to fail in the future. Perry's new book, Artificial Intelligence vs. God, is now available through Perry Stone Ministries. The offer number is BK-036, and you can request your copy for a donation of $25 or more. Order one of three ways, by calling toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323, or online at perrystone.org. You may also send your donation of $25 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number BK-036. This new landmark book is only available through Perry Stone Ministries. Get your copy today so you and your family are prepared for the future of AI technology. We look forward to hearing from you today. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.